Hello again and welcome. In this video, I wanted to start off by talking about one very important module. If you listened to the last video, you know that modules and libraries are things that you can import into a Python script to perform some very complex and higher-end functions. These are oftentimes open source projects that are maintained by the Python community. Usually, uh, some of the more complex ones will be handled by companies like Google. In other cases, some of the mathematical ones will be handled and updated by people at MIT, Stanford. Uh, these are very useful uh, tools to, uh, to incorporate into all of your DH projects. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the more basic function functions that you can do with what I think is, for DH projects, uh, one of the, if not the most, useful module or library. And that module or library is regex which stands for regular expression. Regex is going, you're always going to see it imported uh, as you see it here, import RE. This is the Pythonic way of referencing regex. You have to do this, just get used to it and just do it. Um, but what regex, the, the real power of regex is its ability to interact with strings, with text and be able to identify and find uh, things that uh, the typical standard uh, native Python library can't actually handle. So variance in text, variance in case, uh, finding a specific string that varies both with numbers or uh, words. So it's really good at taking data, taking text data, and extracting uh, very specific but varied results, such as dates, as we see right here. So I'm going to show you how to do some basic functions with regex, very basic functions with just finding uh, specific values in a string. And I'm going to give you a couple really good resources for kind of playing with regex. Regex is not something that you can uh, do 10 video lecture series on and actually demonstrate all of its capabilities. And the reason for that is because the way in which you use regex is very much situational. I have never once had to use regex the same way twice, unless I'm working with something like uh, dates. Uh, every single project, every single instance, you are going to use regex differently. So what I recommend doing is just getting used with some of the basic functions of regex, how to structure a regex command, and then when you find yourself in a situation where you don't really know what to do with regex, go online and just ask Google. Go to places like Stack Overflow. More times than not, someone will have encountered the same problem as you, and we'll have you'll have a bunch of really good answers to that problem. I have yet to find the solution. Uh, I have yet to ask a question that I can't find the solution to online. So take advantage of that great online community. So there are two resources I want to show you right now before we get started. Regex is exceptionally cumbersome, exceptionally complex, and that's both a benefit and a negative. It's a benefit because it means you can perform really complex analyses on a text, but it also means that you have a lot of different things that you kind of have to learn or be familiar with. I will be honest with you, I do not know all of these, and I think there are very few people who actually uh, do. So one of the best tools that you can use is this regex cheat sheet, and I'm going to include it in the link below. But what it is, is it's essentially a quick start regex cheat sheet you go through, and it shows you what all the regex commands actually mean in kind of plain English and what they will catch. So as you can tell, this is not even everything, this is just most of it. Uh, but you can see that this is a lot to actually remember and retain. I find myself constantly going back to this website and using it to make sure that I'm typing in a regex command, regex command correctly. But go through and you'll find yourself using it on a regular basis. I recommend actually uh, bookmarking it. The other really useful uh, regex um, tool that I'm providing in a link below is regex101.com. So when you get here, it's going to look like this. It's going to native uh, be PCRE uh, PHP uh, def by default. Click on Python. Um, just do that because we're working in Python. But what this lets you do is it lets you type out a string and then play with different regex commands to see uh, what you're catching with a regex command and what you're missing. I find myself in more uh, in a lot of cases going through and using this uh, before I actually import the code into my Python script because I can see in real time what my regex command is actually catching and what it's missing. And if 
something's not looking correct, I can go over here, and all that stuff in that cheat sheet is kind of over here on the side column too for a quick reference. This is a very, very useful tool, and I think most developers who work with regex use this. Um, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to just kind of play around with a string of, uh, of data and figure out how commands actually kind of work and what they catch and what they don't catch. So what do I mean when I talk about regex commands? Well, the way in which you're going to interact with regex is you're going to do, let's do a print function. You're going to have to import it, first of all, as you see up here, and then you're going to be able to call it. So the way in which you call a library is you type in however you've imported it, so in this case, re, and then you're going to use dot, and then you're going to call the specific function from that library. I want to work in this video almost exclusively with find all. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in r, and you're going to do a quote, and then we're going to uh, pretty much set up a series of commands to catch things within uh, this quote. Let's say I want to take a look at this new string string, and I want to, for whatever reason, extract just the numbers from the string. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use X, the regex command slash D, which is going to catch a single digit, and I'm going to tell it that I want it to look for that in new string. And this is going to print off the results. And what it prints off for me, you can see it down here, is a list and the list of all of those results. So I know that in this new string, there is one, two, three, and five. For whatever reason, I just didn't type before. Um, but what you can see is it's actually catching all of those results. Let's do this. We're going to change five to 55. And now let's look at those results. Notice that now it's not provided me with a 55. Instead, it's provided me with a second five. And the reason for that is because this regex command only catches a, uh, a single digit. So it's going to go through and anytime it finds an instance of a single digit, it's going to grab it. And because 55 to us, though 55 to us looks like a single digit, to a machine, it's not. It's one and two. It's two separate digits, a five and a five. Now, if I wanted to delineate that I only wanted it to catch double digits, I could do a command like this, clear this. I could do two Ds side by side, and it's going to return that 55, and it's not going to return anything else because it hasn't found a string of two digits back to back. What if I want it to only catch single digit strings, but not have it catch that 55? Well, there's a couple different ways to do this. I can look at my data and I can see that there's a pattern. After every single instance of a single digit, there is a comma, and after this 55, there's a period. So if I did not want to catch this, I did not want that five to be read as an individual five, I can simply edit my command to, uh, to say that I want to find every instance of a single digit, a slash D, with followed by a comma. And now what it's going to return is it's going to return all these instances, but it also has, in the addition to that, a comma followed by it afterwards. So we see a one comma, a two comma, a three comma, and a five comma. Now when we start manipulating our text in the next video, we're going to see how to kind of get rid of that and to uh, use regex find all in a bit more nuanced ways. But for right now, I just want you to get used to the idea of the way you structure a basic, very basic regex command. And that's by simply doing re.findAll, which is the function, r quotations, and in the quotations, put what you want to find. And that's how you do that. And then you do a comma, and then you delineate which thing you want to actually do this to, which object. And in this case, it's new string. So that's how you structure a command. But regex does far more than just find us a single instance of a digit. It's really, really useful, I have found in my projects, for actually finding things that follow more complex patterns, such as dates. So let's look at this one right here. This is a bit more of a complex regex command. I'm going to go through and explain it step by step. First of all, we're doing the exact same thing. We're printing off regex, the function find all, r, and what we're going to do is we're going to look for an occurrence of the numbers 0 through 9, and an occurrence of them occurring twice. And we're going to find after that, we want to make sure that it's going to actually have a slash, which is what we see up here. And then another occurrence of two digits, either uh, in the range of zero to nine, and then a slash 
And then finally, an occurrence of 0 to 9 and 4 digits. That sounds complex, but what we're talking about here is essentially a date. And if I were to print this off, it's going to have an output right here of that date. So what it's been able to do is actually extract a date from this string of text. Now you can have multiple dates. Let's do 02, 01, uh, 1976. And it will be able to extract both of these dates without issue. And the reason why it's able to do that is because the data that we have, the data that we have, follows a very specific pattern for dates. It always leaves a hanging zero. It always leaves a hanging zero for day and month. And it always has the year rendered in four numbers. That's very handy. It means that we can go through, and if our date is consistent, we can extract all instances of a date occurring. What would happen, however, if we didn't always have that hanging zero. What if for a month here, it was simply 201? Well, when we run the code, we see that it did not catch that output. And the reason for that is because it doesn't match the pattern. What if the person importing our data made a mistake and accidentally just put 2 slash 01? That would be very problematic. It would mean that we couldn't catch it. We can actually account for this variance though with regex because regex is quite powerful. Instead of simply telling it that we wanted to only find instances of two digits and two digits and four digits, we can say that in some cases it will either have one or two digits, which is what we have right here. And now when we run this code, we see that it's actually caught just that. This is what makes uh, regex so powerful is its ability to account for variance in text. We can find any date with in any kind of format by just structuring a very long and complex regex code. We can do the same thing right here. If we want to find any instance of this being like that or like that or two and like that, we can account for variance. So this would allow us to find all instances where, let's copy this, we can put that and we will make this and we'll do one at the end that's like that and we'll do that and we'll have it export like that. And what it has done is we see here four very different dates, but all four dates caught without any issue whatsoever. And the reason why we've done that is because we accounted for the variance in the numbers with a simple comma. Now again, I'm not going to go through in this video and explain all instances and all ways of structuring a regex expression. This is something that I want you to do on your own uh, by using the tools I've provided. Uh, and the reason for that is because it, it will vary, very, very heavily uh, depend upon circumstance. I can't go through and think of every possible avenue a DH project uh, might need regex. But if you're ever in a situation where you need to extract a string of data from a string, from a text, use regex. And I encourage you to go on and figure out how to actually structure a regex command to account for any kind of uh, specific string or even a variance in that specific string. This is just one example of how to do it with uh, dates that are represented in numerical form. You can do this, and I've done this in the past, with dates that are not only numerical, but also alphabetical, meaning January is actually spelt out, and also account for the variance of January being J-A-N or even J-A-N-U-A-R-Y. So this is an, just a very basic, rough introduction to the module regex, just to demonstrate its power, and just only, in this case, binding something. In the next video, we're going to look at how to take the data in a text file and use regex to manipulate it. And that's going to demonstrate further the power that regex has behind it. Thanks for listening.